What is up, everyone? We're live Saturday. We made it through the first round of the NCAA tournament. We've got eight games today. Winners go to the Sweet 16. Um, really exciting day games yesterday, Kurt. And, you know, we talked yesterday morning how the DFS slate was going to be way different than Thursday. I didn't think it was going to be as different as it was. Thursday, we had, uh, you know, scores up near 300. Um, and yesterday, I think 170-ish was the cash line. Lots of busts, lots of good plays, um, really underperformed. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, we kind of predicted it would be like that. I wish all the chalk didn't bust that bad. But we were able to get some, some to the survivor. GPPs were not great, obviously. Another tough one here, but I guess there's could potentially be some better value. I don't know if I trust it, but at least it's more plausible than yesterday. So we'll see. Yeah, I did something that I rarely do and played a cuck ass mid range build and felt bad about it the entire time. Of course, the mid range guys sucked as they always do, um, which is why I never play that way. So, pretty disappointed in how I played the slate yesterday um, based on the news. But the games were fun. You know, we had a, a big surprise personally. I, Clemson playing so well. New Mexico, just a complete no-show the entire game. They scored like 55 points. We saw Yale upset Auburn. That was fun. But that game kind of got overshadowed by the awesome Colorado-Florida game, 102-100 in regulation. Uh, we kind of said yesterday on the show that that was going to be the best game of the day, and it definitely delivered. It sucked that those teams had to play each other so early in the tournament because, like we said on the show, two teams that we were really high on, um a and m put 98 on nebraska and now has to go and play houston um that's a bet that i'll probably be on for tomorrow um any other surprises for you yesterday we saw wisconsin uh completely no show uh, it was kind of weird seeing store not really play that much in that game even though they were losing by double digits the whole game uh weird coaching decision by um greg guard there but, you know, I've tweeted about this for months. It's probably annoying to some by now. But I told you, Auburn is going to lose a game that Janai Broom plays 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. For like 24, 14, and three blocks, was dominating the entire game. Plays 25 minutes, and they lose to Yale. Um, I can't believe this isn't a bigger story nationally. I know that national reporters don't like to grill their best friend and Bruce Pearl. But, um, man, he really fucked that up. And, I mean, he's the reason that they lost the game. Bruce Pearl's the reason they lost the game. Um, just unacceptable, I think. Baker Mazar getting kicked out didn't help. Yeah, well, did you see why he got kicked out? He punched the guy in the it. stomach. Yeah, I mean, I figured it was pretty bad. I mean, there was no one arguing it. So, well, I, don't know. Well, I think I was driving to the to eat, but I missed that. As soon as we got there, it was the second half. Yeah. Any overall thoughts on the games yesterday? We also saw Grand Canyon uh, upset St. Mary's in yeah. like a raucous environment last night. You were probably asleep, but that was a road game for St. Mary's. It was like 80% Grand Canyon That's fans. Awesome. The place was loud. It was bumping the whole game. That's awesome. Yeah, we, we think we mostly had that on the show, but gosh, the New Mexico thing hurt so bad. The Auburn thing hurt so bad because that was my contrary. I mean, obviously I've think UConn probably wins it all, but my contrarian pick was Auburn beats UConn and kind of a way to get different. The brackets dead there. So I think it's the first time I've ever had a, a champion losing the first round. So that one was hurtful. Um, it was so crazy though. Cause we were like, I think there was only one TV at the restaurant. We were switching between the Yale game and the, the Florida game. Right. And like, yeah. Like everyone was doing that. And it was like, Oh God. And then you had to look up like, Oh God. So that was a really fun time. I wish we had a couple more of those instances, but you know, we can't, Beggars can't be choosers, so we take what we get. I think today's games are a lot better than what tomorrow's games will be. So let's get into it. Yeah, we have some good games today. Um, I put in the playbook these – basically every slate from here on out, it kind of, you kind of have to approach it like those NFL Thanksgiving slates where, you know, you get started, you see where you're at, you're able to kind of make swaps throughout the day. And um, especially these Saturday and Sunday ones here – they get off to a slow start. Like we have the Arizona game by itself and then the Kansas game and then it ramps up at night. So, um, 
you know, you just kind of have to take these games one by one um, and make decisions based on how you're doing. But yeah, let's get into it here. Um, we kick off the day, 1240-ish Eastern, Dayton, Arizona. Dayton with a massive, massive comeback on Thursday. That game was crazy. Nevada with a total melt, the Mountain West with pretty much a total melt, uh, as they usually do here in the tournament. Um, Arizona is minus nine. It just moved from nine and a half to nine, 150 total here, Kurt. Um, we got the big boy, Deron Holmes, on Dayton's side at nine three. He is, he's going to project well in this spot um, in the massive pace up. You know, Dayton doesn't play top 15 tempo teams very often, Kurt. Um, so they're going to see some extra possessions here for Holmes, for Santos, Cheeks, Bray, guys like that. Uh, let's start with the Dayton side. Um, are you paying up for Deron Holmes today? As of now, I don't find myself, but it's a great matchup. Like guys like this have really gave Arizona fits. I'm sure you got into it in the playbook. They've just the way he can space the floor, how quick he is, but he's he can, you know, he won't play small. So it's just we don't I don't trust the value that much to jam all the value and play him because you kind of have to. I'd rather just stick in the 8K ish range. the decision for at least to maybe try to match the field if I'm able to in like 20 max stuff. Yeah. The issue that I have with Holmes is that you're playing him over like a Dickinson, right? Um, if you trust the yeah. value enough to play both, mm -hmm. I don't mind that. I mean, we have a huge projection on Holmes. We've got him for 41 in 33 minutes. So you know, I worry a bit about the fouls here. Ballo can draw some fouls, but Holmes is, avoided foul trouble pretty much the entire season. Um, and his numbers against higher competition are pretty good. So uh, I trust Holmes. If you like the value, I think a double spend is viable on this slate going up to, you know, to two of the nine K guys, whether it be Shireman, Dickinson, Holmes. Actually, I think that that's an interesting uh, point that we'll do at the end of the show. Kurt is like, do you want to start the, the slate with Holmes or do you want to end it with Shireman? You know, stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, any other interest in the Dayton guys here for you? Um, every time Dayton's on a slate, I find myself not really getting to the mid range guys, but they all do play good minutes. Like we've got cheeks, Bray Santos and Elvis all for 30 plus minutes here projecting, you know, close to four X, um, but probably more of MME plays here with the pace up. I think it's a great question. So I, I've not sat here and watched a bunch of Dayton games. You've watched more than me. So I'll ask you, let's talk about the narrative where Deron Holm does get in foul trouble. Who's going to step up for this Dayton team and score? Like, who's the guy? You watch, you're like, okay, this is this can be the guy if they absolutely need him to be. I don't know who that is because I'm not watching enough Dayton. So, Steve, who is the guy? If Deron gets in severe foul trouble and they have to get someone to, like, up their usage to, like, 20%, who's it going to be? So Nate Santos has had some big games this year. I kind of like him uh, in this spot. Um, he's going to play good minutes. He's right there at 6-1. He's probably going to get lost in the shuffle, um, not for a main team or anything like that. But you mm -hmm. know, if you're playing tournaments, I think Santos is my second favorite date and play here. Um, I'm gonna to the Arizona side, Kurt. Um, Caleb Love with one of the best peripheral games of his career <laughs> on Thursday. Um, pretty tilting because I was, I was on him all morning. Didn't, didn't trust him and didn't end up playing him on, on, on my main. I did have him on basically all of my tournament teams though, which was nice. Um, but love and Balo here, eight, seven, eight, six. Um, but they get a massive down tempo spot Dayton, uh, bottom 25 tempo team. So the projections aren't going to pop off the page for these studs here, Kurt, um, Ballo, I have serious concerns about. Um, Deron Holmes, top 10 in the country in fouls drawn. Um, Ballo's been really good at avoiding fouls this year, though. So I'm not – I don't know. I don't really know where I stand yet, but I just wanted to note that uh, Holmes draws a shitload of fouls here. So um, the good thing with Ballo is that, like we said on the Thursday show, uh, they're pushing his minutes here. So even against Long Beach, he saw 28. Um, if Dayton pushes him here, I could see low 30s for Balo. We have him at 30 minutes right now and a huge projection. Um, 
if you had to choose between the two studs, who do you like more? For Arizona? Yeah. Give me Ballo, man. Like, so Caleb Love's not going to rebound like Dennis Rodman again, but what could happen is he actually starts making shots for the first time in like a month and a half, and it kind of evens out, so that's a little bit scary. But, oh. I just I can't do a 700 love in a, in a pace down game where coming off just an absolute 50 burger. So give me ball and hope he sees out of foul trouble. One thing I am going to do like in this game is for 20 max stuff, play the narrative of if one of them fouls. So I'll play the narrative. If Holmes fouls, I'll play the narrative of follow fouls. I think that's smart to do in GPPs, especially large field stuff. Obviously, that would mean you told us Santos for Dayton and then for Arizona. Big Crevis, who's priced down at 3,800. If Ballo gets in severe foul trouble, I wonder what the projections say if he gets bumped to like 15 or 16 minutes. It, maybe it's enough to hit. So I want to play the foul game in that. And then there's like a bucket of like 4,800 or 4,900 guards that are just very gross. I don't want to have more than one in a lineup for 20 max, but I think it makes sense to have him in the pool. For Dayton, it's Javon Bennett. And then for Arizona, it's Jaden Bradley. Yeah, I think – Besides Balo, the best play on Arizona is Kashad Johnson. Yeah. We've seen his price come back down. The minutes seem safe now. Uh, we've got him for 32 minutes. And at 32 minutes, I think he's going to be a good, you know, like a nice solid play. Um, probably isn't going to kill you and does have some upside there at 6'3". Um, all right, let's go to game two of the day. The highest total on the slate, Kurt. So the two highest totals of the day are the first two games here. So – a bit different than what we've seen the last two days for us. Um, you know, we don't really get to to wait and see how the slate unfolds like we did on Thursday. You know, the the two highest totals are right off the bat. So we have Gonzaga, Kansas here. This open like Gonzaga minus one, one and a half, raced out to Gonzaga minus four and a half. Now it's sitting at Gonzaga minus four on DK, one fifty two total. Um, the good thing about this game with the highest total is we know exactly what we're getting from both sides, right? We know Gonzaga in a close game is going to play their f- five guys, basically the entire game outside of probably EK, but like Nem, Watson and Hickman, we could see them play all 40 minutes here or like 38 plus. Um, so let's start on the Gonzaga side. Um, what do you got for us there? Man, I, I put it in my core. I am completely ready to get Nolan Hickman today. I just playing that many minutes good to like a great total i did 6100 which is cheaper than what we've seen because he's had two stinkers uh, he's actually not been good to me but i just don't know, see how you don't play him to, today in a lot of the single entry stuff and even cash watson be my second choice we all know i hate ek if they have foul trouble he could probably put up a big number because dickinson just he can't foul so he'll literally probably just olay the guy um uh, uh, that's about it for me. Like, I mean, Nimhard A200, like, I'm he's probably going to get his. It's just opportunity cost thing. And I want to try and maybe get a higher ceiling because Harris actually is pretty good defensively. Ben Gregg, I'd probably keep him in the pool just in case, but not a hand build play at all. And that's probably the extent of my Gonzaga exposure. Watson and Hickman are the guys. Yeah. So I was surprised that Hickman wasn't projecting better for us. Um, I put in the playbook coming off uh, two kind of weird games, right? Like they got the St. Mary's, the snail in, you know, in the conference tournament, didn't play well there. And then the blowout where they didn't push his minutes. But I think, you know, if you end up, like if you ask me Hickman versus like a Santos at that same price, I'm playing Hickman oh, yeah. here. Um, he's just going to be on the court the entire game. They have a 77 team total on Ken Palm. Uh, so I like Hickman a good bit. I like Anton Watson, the best up top at 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, he just shows up in these big games. You know, it's kind of cliche, but he kind of skates through a lot of their blowouts. Uh, but when he's needed, he really shows up. And he was awesome in that game on Thursday, um, especially with the peripherals. So, um, yeah, it's Hick, it's Hick, <clears throat> excuse me, it's Hickman and Watson. And then the tournament plays are EK and Greg, I think. Greg, um, the minutes have been good. He doesn't score that much, but the peripherals are awesome. And if he does have a ceiling scoring game, um, we could see him win a tournament. Um, On the Kansas side, I played Dickinson on Thursday. I was really happy with prioritizing getting up to him. 
Um, the price hasn't moved here, Kurt. Um, his usage actually wasn't even that high in that game. Uh, he just got it done in other ways. What do you think about Dickinson here at 9-6 and then the rest of the KU guys as well? Probably my favorite spend up. Do I think he gets 20 boards? No, but I think he'll have to score more in this matchup, so kind of maybe evens out. It's just can do I feel comfortable rostering? I mean, even nine six, like even if he's like my only spin, I can't. I think I'd rather jam in a couple eight K guys, but there will be a lineup and probably even like my, my five main hand builds where I do get him in and just kind of hope that the value does decent. Burphy, I mean, we, we see the rates go up like shot rate went from 10 to 15, rebound rate went from 12 to 20, assist rate went way up without McCall the last three. He's also in my core, so I got the two guards from this game in the 6K range in my core. I've been a Furphy guy. He actually didn't let me down uh, to Thursday. I like going back to him. I mean, Jackson and Timberlake, like, they're just – they're not it. I know Timberlake had a great game, but he's literally horrendous defensively. El, El Marco wasn't ready for the moment. I don't mind taking a shot on El Marco and hoping he actually gets up, but it's so thin. They priced him so, like, AIDS. And I never get Harrison Adams right, but I think Harris is worth having in the pool, especially if Furphy lets me down. It's just hard to imagine Furphy and Harris both not like get one of like both failing to get four and a half X here to me. Like it just seems really hard to see him not doing that. Yeah, I really prefer Furphy over Harris. Harris has not a played all season. Um, if you want your 22 DK points, play Dewan Harris. Boom. Um, Full time asked, why does Stremer play 30? Greg got in some foul trouble and they just kind of went smaller. Um, I don't think that's something that's going to hold. Can we talk about the line in this game? Cause I, I just don't see how Gonzaga doesn't seem roll this five man bench. Yeah. So that's, that's what I was saying is the line opened at one and it like quickly raced out to four be, and a half, five, be come back man. a bit to four. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I, I've got Gonzaga in my bracket. I think that they win this game. Kansas has kind of proven that, you know, they aren't very good without McCuller, who's their most important player, even though Dickinson's their best player. Um, yeah, I think Dickinson, like in cash games, is is an easy click. Um, getting away from him in tournaments, I think, is interesting because I think he's going to be by far the highest owned, um, like, spend on the slate. So getting away from him is interesting in tournaments. Um, I'm going to play five today, uh, and I think I'll probably fade him on like two of them um, because we did see him like when McCuller first got hurt, Kurt, and we jammed Dickinson. Yeah. He had like three straight four games, you know, um, and EK, Watson, they are good defenders. So uh, I think there are paths to him putting up like 35 here. And then if he does that, then other guys in that range can definitely beat him. What do you think about that? Like not going all in on Dickinson here. You're muted. I'm the same way. Like I would even probably go less if five. I'd probably only do two of them, honestly, because I'm just so – but I'm scarred from the time we were jamming him when McCall was out at a good price. So it's, it's tilting. So I would be one lower than you if doing five, which I feel like – Will be a little, maybe a tiny bit under the field. I'm hoping at least. And just because yeah, I, mean, I, I think there's a path where Gonzaga seam rolls them. There's at least a scenario where that happens. Like, I mean, Kansas might be worn out. Like, it's a short turnaround. They literally have no bench. I mean, they might get gas, especially if Gonzaga just goes tempo, 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 tempo. These guys might get so gas, man. Yeah, I'm definitely on the Gonzaga side for the game. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but you're right. I mean, if, Kansas, right. if this line is true, like if they keep it close, it has to be because Dickinson just drops his log, right? Like there's no other scenario. Yeah, I mean, Furphy's gonna have to have a good game. I think he's yeah. a great play. Um, definitely a great cash play. And then I think the best tournament play on Kansas is actually KJ Adams. Um, you know, he's not gonna leave the court. No one's gonna click him in the highest total on the game or on this slate. So. Uh, but let's keep it moving. Awesome, <laughs> awesome game here. Two blue bloods, Michigan State, Sparty against Carolina. This game's going to be great, Kurt. Um, more of a better real life game than DFS game, though, for, for me, which is kind of 
all of Sparty's games. Um, DK's got it. Carolina minus four, 140 and a half total. Um, kind of a sneaky under game, I think. Two top seven defenses on Ken Palm, Kurt. Uh, that's kind of been what's gotten Carolina here is, you know, they're not just running and trying to outscore teams, but they're playing great defense uh, behind Harrison, Harrison Ingram uh, in particular. Um, for DFS, for us, uh, do you like anyone here? We've got Hogard under 7K. I think he and Malik Hall are interesting on the Sparty side. And then I can't remember the last time we saw Harrison Ingram under 7K on, on uh, DK. Yeah, points per value in this game. It's Harrison Ingram coming back to life is my play. Um, we saw the note that Jordan had about how Michigan State has a hard hedge. I know Ingram's not a slasher, but if he can just like shoot well this game and also give them any type of slashing to the rim, I think it'll be he could literally put up a huge number, double double, like sixteen and ten, something like that, and maybe some songs and stuff too. I think it's a good GPP play. I don't know if I trust it yet for my main. I would like to, but it's it's, it's a little scary as far as everyone else in this game. I mean, yeah, Baycott's probably. Up there, maybe my second favorite, like AK guy, RJ Davis. Tough matchup, but we saw how hot he can get at eighty three hundred. It seems like a, a discount. I don't know if I can get to any of these other UNC guys, and then I'll let you kind of talk about Michigan State. Yeah, I think my favorite Sparty play is Hogard. Um, going to play a ton. Going to have the ball in his hands basically the entire game. Um, wish he played a bit more minutes in that first round, but they did kind of blow him out. So. You know, we're expecting low 30s minutes from Hogard. He projects well. Um, Edson Walker at 7-8, a bit tougher for me. But, man, um, good good tournament play in, in the 7K range. Um, he's pretty scoring reliant, but they do get the pace up. Just a tough defense there. We've got good projections on both Hogard and Tyson Walker. I just think Carolina uh, plays re- really well here and gets the cover in this game. Uh, I bet Carolina minus the four. Uh, I think you can find some three and a halfs out there if you shop. So, uh, but yeah, I think Harrison Ingram is the best play in this entire game. Um, I think he's one of the best tournament plays on the slate. We've seen him have some sleepy games, you know, down the stretch, but we've also, (laughs) he was also up over AK for a, a reason there for a while. So, um, no reason that the rebounding is just gone. Uh, I think it'll bounce back, and this is a good spot for it. Sparty doesn't really scare me um, at that 4-5 or five spot at all defensively. So, um, all right, let's keep it moving. Speed One question for you, Stevie. One question. Yeah. I know this isn't the pace game that Caleb Love had, but is Harrison Ingram play the Caleb Love play from Thursday? Um, it's a much worse game environment. It's but true. It's, and he's not going to be as owned as Love was. Um, but, I mean, it's a kind price of, play, right? I think this yeah. is more of like the mm, – it's not as good as the Tristan De Silva play from yesterday, but it's that same price range where it's like a guy – we just haven't seen him priced down this low. It was like DJ Horn yeah. from Thursday. It's like, wow, this guy's a 1,000 less than he has been for the last two months, right? Yeah. Um, Somewhere a mix. So, yeah, of I think I think Ingram is a really really good play, uh, and I think he's going to get lost in the shuffle here. Um, all right, let's go to a defensive battle here. Uh, Wazoo against Iowa State. It was awesome to see Wazoo get past Drake. Everyone picked Drake, which was pretty funny. Um, but we've got Wazoo and Iowa State here with the lowest total on the slate. Uh, Iowa State minus six and a half, one twenty nine total. Um, but we've got, you know, the Wazoo pieces are priced down here, Kurt. The guys that have carried them are all under 7K. Um, Miles Rice, the Frosh, uh, has been awesome, but don't really love him here in, in a lower scoring game. I'll probably go to the guys who don't need to score to get there, which is Isaac Jones and Jalen Wells. Jalen Wells has been, has been great down the stretch. He was good on Thursday. Played him in that night slate. Uh, and he's at 6,200 here. Kurt, he's going to play the entire game. We don't really love the game environment, obviously. But even with the low total, we've got Wells and Jones projecting 
really well, actually, especially Jalen Wells. What do you think there? Yeah, it's I can't believe I'm saying this, but like a 128 total, but Wells will kind of avoid the teeth. I mean, this defense doesn't really have many holes, but he will avoid most of the teeth. The Iowa State defense rates the last three 20 percent shot rate, 21 percent rebound rate, 30 percent assist rate. Like most of the guys coming in with those rates last three, you think are like 7.5 K. I know it's obviously lower because the total and everything else, but I can't believe I'm saying this, but. Like it might be a main team play consideration in a 128 total, which scares the living shit out of me. Yeah, he's been awesome. Um, mm. And he's going to play every minute. He's got 39 in back to back games. Um, the like the 6K range is better than it was yesterday. I, I didn't. Yo, my God, it was non existent yesterday. Non existent. I was pissed because I kept coming to lineups where I had like 6,500 left and there was not one play that I wanted to using that range and today we already have two or three. So um, yeah, I think Wells is the best play on Wazoo. My tournament play here, Kurt, you were going to love this. Oh God. This is a Kurt special here. Um, so the freshman Isaiah Watts off the bench had a big role down the stretch playing low twenties minutes. For some reason in the PAC 12 tournament, he didn't play. Um, was he sick? No, I don't know. I was saying maybe something was on. Something yeah, was on. because he was playing good minutes very consistently down the stretch. Uh, it's basically like their bench score, um, a good bench piece, and kind of gave up on him. Well, I did. Uh, and then the first tournament games he plays 22 minutes off the bench, was basically the first guy off the bench. Um, so before the Pac-12 tournament, he played uh, 16, 28, 15, and 26 with a couple of really good games in there. Um, he's super talented. Uh, the O rating is good. I wish he was a bit cheaper than 4-4, Kurt, but mm. I think I'm going to play him on one of my five as a cheap guy because everyone's going to use the same cheap pieces, and I just need him to beat um, one of those guys. So I think Watts is really interesting for tournaments only, obviously, um, because we're not sure if the role is sticky, but if he does get low twenties, uh, I think he is definitely interesting. Um, any interest in the Iowa State side? We've got Lipsy and Gilbert kind of priced up a bit in this spot. I think. Yeah, I think everyone's priced up for Watts. Would you assume that Watts is able to handle that ball pressure from Iowa State more than Husseini could, even though he's a fresh? I'm not sure. I just, you know, if they're going to use him for 20 plus minutes off the bench, then he's yeah. in play. Double watch you know? season. For Iowa State, it's honestly just Hassan Ward dart for me. And it's extremely, extremely risky. Just you probably need some fouls and other stuff to happen. If he gets 20, though, I really like his rates and stuff. Hassan Ward, a good solid fantasy per minute guy, 4,800. Probably like a 10th lineup guy you put in. I don't have any interest in, in any of these other guys, man, that got all, which is, I think they're. I don't know. Yeah, just just Ward on the Iowa State for me. Yeah, and the Wazoo guys are max one, obviously, in this game. Yeah. Um, let's go to Oakland, That's NC please. State. Wow, the uh, was this an eleven against a fourteen here, Kurt? Uh, couple upsets in the first round. NC State continues the run. They looked good, man. Like I put in the playbook, um, people weren't buying in coming into that first game, but. You know, this is this is a different team now. We've got Mo Dr playing thirty eight a game and rebounding his ass off. Like it's a different makeup of the team. Um, so I'm more apt to to buying into big changes like that or to like hot streaks when there are meaningful like role changes and personnel changes that go along with it. Right. Uh, that's kind of where we were with Colorado, it's was just them getting healthy here. It's Mo Diara is now playing max minutes and rebounding his ass off. Um, he's got another great rebounding spot here against the zone. Um, I think DR and horn are great plays here in the low seven K range. Probably won't get to any other NC state guys. Um, I played, like I said, I played such a bad lineup yesterday living in the 5k range with like Fridell and uh brandon newman and that bullshit those are the o'connell and casey Morcel plays here i will not be touching those dudes 
Um, no, but I know that you want to talk about a cheap NC State guy. Go ahead and uh, talk about NC State here. You don't like to touch dudes? No. Ben Middlecux in my core. I want to have him or assuming Trey Williams is out for Duke. I want to have Middlebrooks for Neck S. They're going to be the popular like value plays. So I want to make sure I have one and hope that one just kind of hits 13. doesn't absolutely nuke me into oblivion. I mean, he's played well down the stretch. Like, I mean, they could burn. He actually won that game on Thursday. He looked good. There's another game like it down the stretch. I don't know if it was two, three, four games ago, maybe right before the ACC tournament, but he like, did awesome closing the game. So something to keep no one's in mind. Have him too. No one's gonna play middle brooks. I think it's I think it's a fine play. I mean, like I don't think you're dead if he gets you 12. I mean, if you make it up elsewhere, to be honest, we saw what happened yesterday. Like I cashed all kinds of bums. But yeah, so been middle brooks or neck s and then DR. We've seen these teams like rebound against the zone and historically against Syracuse, not this year, but before, like these good rebounders just can go nut nut against zones so i'm excited to see dr hopefully he just crashes like a maniac and gets all putbacks and whatnot horn still a little too cheap so i'm going right back to that well on the open side I, I i don't know i might just like go lucky nuke me into oblivion today which will not be fine if he does yeah uh i really like dr here i'm gonna let other people play the more cells and the O'Connells and get their 18s. Um, not a chance I play those guys. Um, on the Oakland side, Kurt, and freaking goalkey cost me uh, mania. Mm-hmm. If he just hits nine threes instead of 10, I move on. Just That's so wild. crazy. Um, but we've seen all the Oakland guys get priced up after that Kentucky game. Um, the big thing here is the return of Rocket Watts off the bench. Seemed pretty obvious that they wanted to get him the ball and get him usage. He's at 3-7. I think he's an easy core play. I think he's easily the best cheap guy on this slate. He should be super high owned. Um, besides Rocket Watch, do you have any interest here? We have Golki up to 7K, DQ Coles up to 6,200, and uh, Townsend up to 8,400. I thought well, – I- Watching that Oakland game, I would have thought there was more foul trouble. I guess it was all in the first half, and then they just didn't foul the second half. Like, I just could have sworn Lamb had three, but not not much foul trouble. I, it just seemed like they really wanted Watts to run the show. Because I, I had DQ Cole, I was sweating him, and he did get there, but my God, did he have to be efficient. Because it just seemed like everything was running through Watts and Townsend. That's it. And then, obviously, go like he off screens and just chucking. I, I mean, I love cheap guys, and especially guys like this, but – and I'm going to play him a shit ton, but I got to say, I'm just a little scared about Watts. I don't know how much I trust this Oakland guard situation now. Like, what if Jones – I mean, Jones started. What if they're like, oh, you know what? This is a good matchup. Let's play him 15 minutes. And it's like, oh, God. I know he's only 3,700. Well, I'm going to be overweight, but I'm scared. I'll say that. They need Watts to handle the ball. I think Watts is clearly the best value on the entire team. I think a good job, though, which is why I was like, what the fuck? Um, all right, a few moves. We got three games left. Um, Texas, Tennessee, the Rick Barnes Bowl here, Kurt. Um, Texas beat Colorado State in perhaps the greasiest game of the first round. It was like 56 44 or something. Just terrible. Um, I think Tennessee plays really well in this spot. Um, DK's got a Tennessee minus six and a half, 146 total. Uh, I took Texas's team total under 70 and a half, Kurt. Uh, I like that look. Uh, but for DFS here, we saw Tennessee kind of in a cakewalk in the first round, uh, so they didn't push minutes on their main guys. Uh, I think the best play on the entire slate is in this game. I think Jonas Edu at 7K. Um, man, if you can't play him here, you're not playing him the entire season. So. Uh, Adu will be in my main lineup for sure. I think Connect is interesting at 8-5, um, especially as like a pivot to the more popular spends on the slate. Where are you at with this game? I love this game. I, I kind of hope the refs let Adu and – gosh, well, speaking of foul trouble, like the Sioux got away with a couple of stuff the other day and he still got in foul trouble. So I'm hoping the refs just literally just doesn't look at some of the stuff the Sioux does and lets him – 
just foul like crazy. Same thing with the dude. I hope he doesn't get foul trouble. I'd really love to see these, both these guys able to play max minutes. Love both. I think Zygo is an awesome floor play with ceiling is there. Sub 8K, I like it. Connect and Hunter should be going at it. Like Ace Smith and Zygo should go at it. This is going to be such a fun game. And then you got the two big – like I love the individual matchups in this game. It's literally getting me you know, stiffy. But I, as far as I rank this, Tennessee side, I'm going – Points for value, who I trust more, Adu, Zeigler, Connect, love all three. I don't know if I can get to the ancillary pieces for Tennessee. I can't get to the ancillary pieces for Texas, though. Ace missed to Sue. Hunter's probably too expensive, but I know he has his games. Orton I'll probably throw in. And then, I mean, you can get other guys in the pool, but that's really the extent for me. But I like a lot of guys in this game. I'll probably have a mini stack here. Yeah, to Sue under 7K, man. But, like – he deserves to be under seven games fouled in like six straight yeah. games. He's gotten away with stuff too. Like that last game, he should have had seven fouls. Yeah, I mean, he he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing out there. Um, yeah, so I think D'Souza a nice upside play. Tough to put him on a main team. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not yeah. like it's a good matchup, right? Tennessee uh, could just put the clamps on Texas here. He has um, to be able to shoot. He's got to shoot and make a shot at some perimeter. Yeah, uh, this is going to have to be a perimeter game for him. He is a great shooter uh, and just avoid fouls. So, yeah, I think he's a good play. Um, would scare the shit out of me to use him on a main lineup, though, because uh, you could just get an extreme foul game. Plus, you know what I can see happening real quick? I, like, they do that pick and roll, and then, or not even pick and roll, they just have guard gets penetration, lobs it up to a dude, Dasu goes over to help, and then tries to like recover and just literally hacks a dude twice in the first five minutes. I can see that happening. Yeah. It's so likely to happen. <clears throat> but yeah, Adu and Connect are the best plays in this game. Um, Ziegler, I think, is interesting for tournaments. No one's going to play him. Um, and I think Tennessee has a bunch of success in this game. I could see them winning this game pretty easily. Um, all right, two games left. Uh, the Nightcaps, Duquesne got through. Uh, that was one of the first games there on Thursday. Um, and then. Illinois, man, their offense is just clicking on all cylinders right now. Kurt behind God mode, Terry Shannon. Mm. Um, he's sitting at nine one here. Uh, he seems pretty safe to get you like high thirties of forty plus. The issue is Duquesne, a little bit more of a defensive oriented team. They play a bit slower. Um, will they run with Illinois? I don't know, but they do have an eighty team total here which is the highest on the entire slate. So, you know, we had higher game totals earlier, Kurt, but this is the highest team total on the slate. Your guy, Coleman Hawkins, 7-1. He just kind of had a ho-hum 28 in that first round game without really doing anything. I think he's a great tournament play. And then I'll probably be fading 8,500 to mask off of the luck box triple-double game that he had in the first round. Um, One last note on... Illinois, um, man, this is this team's ceiling is a bit different. If they're going to get what they got out of Dane Danger the last couple games, he looks noticeably thinner out there. Noticeably like I think hard. that's the reason that, that he's he running the court, there. Steve. Steve, he's running the court. He's running the full court. And so out, that, out running dudes. Yeah, so like that's my theory as to why he wasn't playing all season. Is like they just told him that he had to get in shape. Like he it looks like he's lost like 20 pounds during the season. So now that he's lost the weight, he's back into the rotation. Um, and, man, he looks good. I wish he was cheaper. Like if he was like 4'8 here, uh, I think he'd be an awesome play. So at 5'6", it's kind of tough to click him. But definitely a guy to to keep an eye on here. Uh, let's start with the Illinois side. What do you like here? So there's two big questions this game, and you've mentioned it. Will Duquesne run with him? If so, it's a great game environment. And then – Will Illinois go big and try to just assert their dominance with danger? We don't know what his man's will be. We don't know if they'll go big or small. We don't know if he'll stay out of foul trouble. So that's why you can't really risk 5,600 unless you're doing large field stuff because you don't know if he's going to foul or even get the minutes. I think you can play lineups based off what you think happens for both those scenarios. And Illinois side, I think Shannon is – if you upgrade $400 playing Shannon over – Dickinson, you love the upgrade for $400. I think he's a better play. If not, then I'm obviously ranking some Dickinson above him, but I really like Terry here. He's just made for March. I don't think this run ends here. I think he'll just keep absolutely nuking. 
and I don't think anyone on Duquesne can slow him down. Besides, if they slow the pace down extremely, extremely slow and limit the possessions. Hawkins, <laughs> I mean, the 50 burgers come. If they keep winning, it's coming eventually. Domas got all the peripherals yesterday, so it's kind of hard. And it probably will be hard when Domas is getting all these peripherals, but it's coming. 7,100, it's nice to get a 50 burger. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's out there. Yeah. 7,100, Coleman Hawkins. Definitely going to be on a couple of my teams today. Yeah, no, the uh, the danger play is just for like the big $20 here, Kurt, I think. Um, all right, on the other side, we have a big news spot. Trey Williams missed on Thursday. He's missed a couple games for Duquesne. Um, and Fus Drame got into early foul trouble, which allowed um, Netches to play a bunch of minutes uh, in the 3Ks. I think he's kind of earned a role here. He's going to be super popular. So um, I don't think he sees the 30 minutes that he saw because – the only reason he saw that many was because of foul trouble, but he has played well in his time. He's a like an ascending freshman. Uh, I think he's a good play. I think he's a cash play if Trey Williams is out. Um, but I think getting away from him in tournaments is super interesting. That's why we've been talking about the Ben Middlebrooks, the Isaiah Watts, guys like that, because I think um, locking him – in all your lineups is probably a mistake. I think he's a worse value play than Rocket Watts, personally. Um, what are your thoughts here on Netches? It's just like, what if Trey Williams is active and gives them 10 minutes? It makes that front court situation extremely murky for them. And then, like, who would your pivots be? Would you then have to play, like, one of those, like, God, like, I don't even know. Um, a Quindo? Like, if Trey Williams plays it, like, would you just roll the dice in a Quindo? And I don't know. It's it's weird. Or maybe you just roll Neko. So that's probably why you'd want to be cautious with it. But I want him or Middlebrooks in my lineups. And then if I do get stuck with Nekas and it wins ruled in, I can assess the situation when it comes to that point. For the rest of Duquesne, I think the guards are fun GPP plays if it plays, if you think they do run with them. But I just don't like trusting these guys I've not watched all year. It's a personal preference. And maybe that makes me a, a fish. I don't know. And then Jake B. Michelle in that 4K guard range, it's like they're going to play a lot. They're going to be out there. Maybe they can give me 4X and be the worst piece on a winning team. Could happen. Could happen. <laughs> yeah, the issue with this game, Kurt, um, with the news, is that it's the second game of that window. And DK continues to completely fuck up this lock situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we know that they can do it because they tried it out a couple weeks ago. They oh, do well, it for the point is, if, if, the, if, the tour, if golf gets moved back and tournament's about to like overlay yeah. massively, oh, they'll push it back then, but they can't do it for us in college basketball. Okay. Okay. I mean, they did it for us in college hoops a couple weeks ago, right right after yeah. we had the meeting with them. Um, super frustrating because there's been a bunch of spots in this tournament that we could have used it. Um, and this is, this is going to be one of them. So uh, you're – going to get one of the highest owned pieces on the slate. Actually, probably the the second highest owned guy on the slate, I think is a very flimsy play in tournaments. Um, so I'll be probably fading him in tournaments here. Uh, good cash play. He's cheap, and I think he's going to be out there regardless. So um, do you have any interest in – so the other guy who's projecting well is David Dixon, uh, the big man for Duquesne. I think he's kind of a blah play here. Um, I think he's also going to be super owned. So I'll be fading these two Kane guys in tournaments. Uh, I actually like the guards more than the cheap guys in tournaments here, just going up to a day-to-day -day Grant or a Jimmy Clark, because um, I don't think anyone's going to click those guys. And, you know, this is a good game environment. They're getting a huge pace up. So I think Clark and Grant are fun for tournaments. Um, Netches is your cash play. Dixon's cash viable i guess i just don't have a lot of confidence in his projection right now at least with dixon like if williams is ruled in you can play kwame evans since he always projects like a god for some godforsaken reason at least you have a pivot there with dixon like if yeah dixon's just projecting higher than i think he should like i agree we, we've only got him for 24 minutes is he really going to get low like is he going to be a one fantasy point per minute guy against illinois um i think there's some downside in that projection for sure um Dixon, the big man, like his stats against 
tier A competition is are terrible. Also, mm-hmm. Kurt, 8.1 fouls per 40 against tier A and B. Um, so Dixon is going to be super high owned. I'm not playing his ass. I would love to be high owned. It would be awesome. Um, all right, let's, let's go to the last game. We end with a really good one here. Oregon, Creighton, Oregon, a clear, easy upset pick in the first mm-hmm. round. They actually close as a two-point favorite. Um, but now the zone against Creighton. Uh, I took Creighton. They're minus four and a half right now. Love, love, love Creighton in this spot. Oregon's run comes to a close here. Um, Oregon's going to force Creighton to do exactly what they want to do, which is chuck up a bunch of open threes. So um, DFS-wise, though, here, Kurt, let's start with the Creighton side because that's the easy side. Uh, we've got Shireman at 9-3, Kalk at 9, and Trey Alexander off a couple of of down games is down to 8-1. Um, do you have any preference between these three? So it's the cheapest one for me. I <laughs> mean, give me Trey Alexander, baby. Fire him up. Um, yeah, I don't rule. I'm not really great with creating guys besides Baylor, but usually on those Baylor sites, I'm able to just jam some value I really trust. I, like Baylor, Dickinson, and Shannon are really going to be a tough call for me, but I think it's obvious you just you go Shannon and Dickinson as far as. Anyone else on Creighton? I, my core, I got. I want one late hammer piece from this game, so I put Ashworth or Shellsad. Just a personal preference. I want to. I want a piece in this game, and because I, I want the late hammer, because I want a piece of action in this game. I think it'll be awesome. So, one, two, six K guard options who should play every minute and have solid usage. I think their floor is not horrendous, and I think they can have upward high thirties fantasy point game. Yeah, I think I think Shireman and Alexander are the best plays here. Um, Kalk is going to have to deal with Dante the entire game. Dante has been so good down the stretch. It's like Shaq down there. Um, That's why it's going to be a perimeter shooting game for them, which is why I, I even like Ashworth more. Yeah. I don't think they want to take it into Dante. And then the Oregon side, six straight games of 38 plus DK for Dante, Kurt. Um, finally healthy, playing great. Has to deal with Kalk Brenner here um but so did enrique freeman and he went for what 48 dk on thursday just owned my soul um but they always comes in low own like no one ever plays this dude um i think he's a really interesting contrarian guy who's consistently shown upside it's not like you have to theorize that he might have a big game he has a big game every time out um so i think Dante is super interesting. He played 36 minutes in that last game, Kurt. Like with his rates and his, you know, rebound and block upside, if he's playing mid to high 30s, I think that he can beat these other guys up top. Kuznard don't have as much interest in. Um, man, he was good in that Carolina game or in that South Carolina game. Um, 37% shot share in the last three games is out of this world. Uh, I think I'd just rather play Dante, but Kuznard, man, it's hard to ignore what what he's been doing. Um, and then Shellstad in the mid-range, another guy that I, I would have played at 6-5 yesterday if he was on yesterday's slate to avoid those fucking idiots, Newman and Friedel, who I didn't want to play all day. Um, but, yeah, I think he's a reasonable play, probably more of a cash play, Shellstad. Uh more of a four play, floor play there at 3-7. And then J.J. and Tracy is going to be out there for 30-plus minutes. He's kind of the same play as D. Michelle, I think. You know, just if you end up there as a last man and you don't want to change the rest of your lineup, I think you can use a D. Michelle or a Tracy um, in that spot. Um, any last thoughts on Oregon here? Thoughts on Dante? Uh, I'm no, I'm just a little bit scared about Dante. I'm scared about the block up side. He's been awesome. I think he gets like a just a saw. I think he looks like a real life awesome player, and then he puts up like 35, 37. So his overall impact on the game is massive. But then you look at the like the fancy points, like oh, only like 35, and then you see all the other guys outscore him. He's got 38 plus and six straight. Take, here comes 35. <laughs> I'll give him 37. And I still think they're out. The AK guys can outscore him, but I like I. I think his floor probably is 32 here. Like, he's just a stud, especially if he's out of foul trouble. Um, 
Yeah, that's I, I like Tracy. I just think he's fine. I'm throwing him in the bucket of the 4K guys. I know two of them play like max minutes, and the other two play like 20-ish. But I could see one of them, the sub 5K guys, getting there if your build needs it. Is is Evans once again projecting well, <laughs> or is it, are we finally done with that? He projects well every slate. Let me I see. don't understand. <laughs> I mean, the guy's gonna be good. He's like he's just a kid. He's gonna be good, but like, what are we doing? <laughs> He does not project great. He projects for three point. We we have him for three point seven x. I mean, he projects well because he had like a couple of those random like forty games, um, but he doesn't do much out there. He'll he'll be a play next year. Um, yeah, who's a five matchup? star? Will they yeah. have him on Baylor? Yeah. I don't know. That would be good for Baylor, I think. That would be great. Um, for all right. Well, we actually went the whole hour. Um, so a little deeper dive on each game since we only had eight here. Kurt, why don't you give us your just kind of overall slate thoughts and uh, your play of the day here to close us out? Similar to yesterday, but I'm not going to be scared to like get too crazy because I think that the 7K and like the, those shocker apps, I don't think there'll be too much shock as much as yesterday, but I think I want to go back and just trust the projections here and maybe let other people get too crazy. I kind of do want to rotate my value a little bit outside of like, I know Watts and Neckus are going to project the best, maybe get different and not having both in the same lineup and kind of just going a little bit more balanced with only one, like one of those 4k guys I mentioned. And then like you said, Steve mentioned Watts too. So that's another 4k guy you can throw in there to get different than the two chalk values. Um, and for my play of the day, I don't want to curse him. I want to curse him either. Oh gosh, Steve, give your play of the day. I got to find someone I don't want to freaking. <laughs> All right, so me. I'll go with my slate thoughts. Um, I think this is the best tournament slate that we've had so far in the three days because I think everyone's going to play what, like, there's a pretty clear, like, optimal route, I think, on this slate. It's a pretty easy cash slate for me. Um, I think there's some really good fades for tournaments. Um, those would be the Duquesne guys who project well, the cheap ones. Um, you, you have a guy with a flimsy role who everyone just saw play 30 minutes because the starter fouled. And David Dixon, who's got a foul rate over eight per 40 against actual competition. Um, and then I just think there's a lot of good like tournament type plays on the slate. Um, I, just starting from the top, my favorites, Anton Watson, KJ Adams, Harrison Ingram, uh, Diara and Horn, Dalton Connect, the Duquesne guards up top, Terry Shannon, Dante, Creighton guys Coleman, like Coleman Hawkins. Yeah, Coleman Hawkins. There's just a lot of good upside guys that I think are going to come in lower owned based on what I've seen with ownership projections. I think. A lot of ownership is just going to condense around the optimal today. I just have that feeling. Um, and there's a lot of guys who are going to come in under 20% who have slate winning upside, guys that we've been playing all year, like guys that we like. So that's why I like this slate a lot. Um, actually playing more tournaments than I usually do, Kurt. So I've joined the dark side with you here. Um, I just think it's a really, really good tournament slate. Uh, and we have good contests. So uh, we've got 20K to first and the $20 get in that. Uh, we've got a good 222, a good 44. Um, if you want to join us for the rest of March, use code March15. We've got playbooks, core plays for every slate. We got projections for every slate. The Discord is super active. Um, yesterday was a weird slate. I think we, you know, we had the super high scoring mispriced slate. We had the weird, like, foul slash no one making value slate. I think this is going to be more of a normal one, Kurt, hopefully. Uh, yeah. and, and, and we do have some good, um, we do have some good games too. Gavin says Deron Holmes. Yeah. He's going to be high owned here. That's what I mean. There are guys that you can get away from Deron Holmes to, uh, to get different. So he was listing. Okay. First of all, uh, boss bro, it's Watson, Neckus, chalk value. And then ghetto, a do is chalkier, which is why Steve didn't mention him. He's projecting great. He'll be very popular. Steve was mentioning like the great tournament pivots off guys like that. Yeah. 
Um, <clears throat> play of the day. Play of the day. <sighs> no, we have to go back to you. First. Harrison, Ing Harrison Ingram. You son of a bitch. That was gonna be mine. I know. I, I thought it was. I was hoping. It, oh, I was hoping you're going somewhere. I yeah, mean, Harrison Ingram, such a good tournament play here. Not really. Yeah. Um, man, you threw me off. I'll go with. So you talked about a, wanting like a 6K guy in the late night hammer. Um, I'll go with Baylor Shireman play of the day as a pivot to the 9K guys who are going to be super popular in Dickinson and Deron Holmes. I'll go with Baylor Shireman outscores both of them here in this Ooh. spot. Um, any last words, Kurt? We got uh, we got eight games, but we got – you know, we get to ease into it today. Yeah. You know, soak it, soak it up, guys. It's it's almost the saddest time of the year, summer. So soak soak these days up while we can. <laughs> even if like even if you're getting killed, just appreciate getting killed. You know, it's it's great. It's a great time of the year, best time of the year. Yeah, we had a bunch of upsets yesterday. The game should be good today. For Kurt, I'm Steve. We'll see you tomorrow morning. I haven't decided ten or ten thirty, Kurt. We will talk offline about that, but we'll we'll let you guys know in the chat and on Twitter. All right. Good luck today.